I'm Reverend Jesse Brandon. I'm a life cycle celebrant and a metaphysical minister, and you're watching Epiphanies. And Epiphanies is the place where I bring the two things I love most in the world together, books and people. So today, we're talking about The War of Art. It is by Stephen Pressfield, and it says, break through the blocks and win your inner creative battles. That sounds so exciting. It says, creative work is a gift to the world and every being in it. Don't cheat us of your contribution. Give us what you've got. Ooh, that sounds good. And with me today discussing this book is Leanne Cannell. Leanne Cannell is a former dental hygienist who decided to follow her heart and become a holistic coach. She is a master NLP practitioner, a Reiki master, and is currently studying shamanism. She specializes in helping women release the blocks that are holding them back so they can connect to their inner truth and become the person they were born to be. Well, on that note, I welcome you to the set. Thank you so much, Leanne. Thank you, Jesse. Such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. So tell me, why did you choose that book? You know, it's funny, I've been sitting here thinking how I would answer that question because it has been, <clears throat> it's been a long go. I actually bought this book at least three or four years ago mm -hmm. and it's been sitting on my bookshelf and I've gone in and I've read it bits and pieces here and there and just never committed to reading the whole thing mm -hmm. and the book itself is actually on that topic the topic of resistance yeah and those things that um, we know are good for us mm -hmm. and we don't do them mm -hmm. so resistance is basically that part of you it's your ego basically that um, is preventing you from following through on your own truth and following your higher self mm -hmm. and those things that um, will help you to evolve spiritually and and it can be anything really um, anything that is preventing you from being your best self right okay mm -hmm. so can you give me an idea of what an anything might be um, well how about I read a little passage in here I because would it love he that describes it quite well Okay. So, most of us have two lives, the life we live and the unlived life within us. Between the two stands resistance. Have you ever brought home a treadmill and let it gather dust in the attic? Ever quit a diet, a course of yoga, a meditation practice? Have you ever bailed out on a call to embark upon a spiritual practice, dedicate yourself to a humanitarian calling, commit your life to the service of others? Have you ever wanted to be a mother, a doctor, an advocate for the weak and helpless, to run for office, crusade for the planet, campaign for world peace, or to preserve the environment? Late at night, have you experienced a vision of the person you might become, the work you could accomplish, the realized being you were meant to be? Are you a writer who doesn't write, a painter who doesn't paint, an entrepreneur who never starts a venture? Then you know what resistance is. Wow, you just wrote my to-do list. Right? Yeah. Yes. He, all through, he's very funny. Um, and it's broken down into many little, like very bite-sized pieces. Mm -hmm. And um, it just really goes into all those things that I never knew I was struggling with. You know, and it even goes back to my childhood when I was told, you know, I was lazy or I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. And um, I just, I have numbed out for quite a lot of my life, not realizing my potential. Mm -hmm. And um, books like this, you don't open and read until you're ready to. Mm -hmm. I've got many books on my bookshelf that are just sitting there waiting for me to be ready. Yeah. And, um, and I think that's why I had bits and pieces of this that I read at certain times. And then finally, within the last, last couple of months, I finally read it. And I had finished reading it, and for some reason, I guess it was because Dion had just seen you, that I thought, oh my gosh, I have to talk to Jesse about this book. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so, and, and that was an example of resistance so my true self my higher self said to me okay you need to talk to Jesse about this this is your calling this is what you're gonna help women break through of those things that are holding them back mm -hmm. and so I reached out to you immediately and you were wonderful we communicated and we set this up since that day my ego my Sheeta as we say in shamanism has completely been saying you can't do this there's no way you can do this. You're not good enough to do this. Who do you think you are to go on a show, be on TV and talk to somebody wonderful about your, like, so that's, that's what pops up. 
Mm -hmm. and, and he really wonderfully goes through, he talks about what it is, and then um, he actually does have a surprising spiritual aspect in the book that I didn't expect. Oh, yeah. Um, and he actually quite beautifully uh, describes the differences between the ego and the higher self. If cool. Do you have I read that? Yeah, yes. please. Here's what I think. I think angels make their home in the self while resistance has its seat in the ego. The fight is between the two. The self wishes to create, to evolve. The ego likes things just the way they are. What is the ego anyway? Since this is my book, I'll define it my way. The ego is that part of the psyche that believes in material existence. The ego's job is to take care of business in the real world. It's an important job. We couldn't last a day without it. But there are worlds other than the real world, and this is where the ego runs into trouble. Here's what the ego believes. Death is real. The ego believes that our existence is defined by our physical flesh. When the body dies, we die. There is no life beyond life. Time and space are real. The ego is analog. It believes that to get from A to Z, we have to pass through B, C, and D. To get from breakfast to supper, we have to live the whole day. Every individual is different and separate from every other. The ego believes that I am distinct from you. The twin cannot meet. The twain cannot meet. I can hurt you and it won't hurt me. The predominant impulse of life is self-preservation. Because our existence is physical and thus vulnerable to innumerable evils, we live and act out of fear in all we do. It is wise, the ego believes, to, care, to have children to carry on our line when we die, to achieve great things that will live after us, and to buckle our seatbelts. There is no God. No sphere exists except the physical, and no rules apply except those of the material world. So those are the principles the ego lives by. Mm -hmm. They are sound, solid principles. Here's what the self believes. Death is an illusion. The soul endures and evolves through infinite manifestations. Time and space are illusions. Time and space operate only in the physical sphere, and even here don't apply to dreams, visions, transports. In other dimensions, we move swift as thought and inhabit multiple planes simultaneously. All beings are one. If I hurt you, I hurt myself. The supreme emotion is love. Union and mutual assistance are the imperatives of life. We are all in this together. And God is all there is. Everything that is, is God in one form or another. God in the divine ground is that in which we live and move and have our being. Infinite planes of reality exist, all created by, sustained by, and infused by the spirit of God, or source, or whichever you choose to call it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's absolutely beautiful. Right? And it's, yeah, and yeah. I was going to say that's exactly what I believe yep, as well. It's, I know. Yeah. yeah. And, and to me, it's just so much more comfortable mm -hmm. to believe in the oneness of all. Yeah. You know, I, it just makes sense to me. So that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So what, what brought the book to you that it sat on your shelf for three years? How did you hear about it or what I happened? I can't remember whether I told Dion about it or if Dion told me about it. Oh, and yeah. I went out and bought it. And um, I have that habit. <laughs> Anytime I hear of a book that I should read or that, you know, if I'm in Bell Book and Candle and I pick up something, if it calls to me, I'll pick it up. And, you know, yeah. I have a bookshelf full. And I would say I've probably only read 20%. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's the resistance piece. Oh gosh, don't read anything that's actually going to evolve you spiritually or cause you to move past this block. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just getting to a place now where I'm starting to uh, be able to do so. So um, I think it came to me around the time that I was thinking about taking NLP. And it's just very interesting how my spiritual path has evolved. Um, I, did Reiki first, and then I took NLP. And then this past summer, my wife and I um, went to Manitoulin Island to do a shamanic workshop on soul journeying. And so we were up there in July and completely fell in love with our teacher. We fell in love with the island. It was just, everything just seemed to fall into place. Mm -hmm. And so um, I actually live on Manitoulin now, work out of Simcoe County, and um, there's been a bit of a divide there. And um, I'm grateful that I finally had the courage to um, give up my identity of being a dental hygienist because I was one for 17 years, and although it served me well, it certainly um, was not part of my 
true values and the true person of who I was meant to be and who I was brought here to be. So having moved to Manitoulin and starting to study shamanism, it just seems to be bringing in and filling in all the little bits and pieces that, um, that we're missing. And, and I'm loving that these ancient teachings, um, there's such a mirror between them and what I've learned in NLP and it's just filling in the spirituality just so beautifully. Mm -hmm. And so I think because I'm starting to find that way, my resistance is starting to, my higher self is having a bit more of a oomph to my voice. Yeah. Um, but also that does mean that the resistance kicks in a little bit more hard. The, um, the more that you are supposed to answer the call and you are answer, you're to answer your true self, mm -hmm. the more resistance kicks into gear. Mm -hmm. So um, it has been a bit of a, it's been a battle and, and um, I've been really concentrating on, on, on writing. Uh, I believe you've had a guest talk about the artist's way and I am committed to my morning pages. Yeah. Those three pages that I write first thing in the morning, they just set me up for the day. Hmm. And, um, and if you commit to them and stick with them, amazing beauty comes out of them. Hmm. So sometimes they're a morning dump and sometimes uh, I write poetry. It just comes out, it flows out. Yeah. And you can commune with your unconscious mind in them as well. You know, so what am I supposed to write? What am I supposed to do today? What do I need to know? And, and that comes out as well. So it allows you to have more of a conversation with your higher self. And um, it's just a, a wonderful tool that I've started to use much more readily. Yeah. I started I, them, sorry Jesse. I started them several years ago. I, Colette Mestag have, has been doing The Artist's Way and I think I was in one of her first groups. And um, resistance again, it kicks in when, when you're doing something that it knows is doing you doing well for you and and the longer you do those morning pages every day the more powerful it is and so it's just doing everything in its power to get you to stop doing those so there were periods that I had stopped doing the morning pages and um, and I suffered with it it was a big problem with being able to communicate with myself and yeah, yeah. that oh I'm just fascinated by everything that you're saying so <laughs> um, hmm I'm I'm utterly speechless because I've gone into thinking. Well, that's about not good because I'm not the talker. <laughs> You're the talker. <laughs> no, this is perfect. This is perfect. You just keep going. I'll think. No, you know it's funny because I have the artist's way and I've looked at it a couple mm -hmm. of times, but I didn't consider myself an artist, oh. and so I didn't think it was really the book for me. It was actually a gift from my sister, mm -hmm. and she did it with some friends of hers many years ago, and she's passed now, so I can't go to her and say, okay, mm -hmm. do it with me. And I would never have considered her an artist either, right. so that's really interesting. Well, artistry and creativity is whatever is intrinsic to you and an intrinsic to your soul. Mm -hmm. It is what your soul wants you to express. Mm -hmm. So it can be in any any medium, any anything at all. Like for you, speaking and doing your ceremonies, absolutely, that is you expressing your truth. Mm -hmm. And um, and I'm still trying to find my voice. Um, I've written, I've been a writer. I actually, in grade eight, I won the Creative Writing Award. Um, yeah. <laughs> but um, there, was, there was a part of me that never thought that I truly deserved it. My mom was a teacher at the school, so I thought, oh, mom must have pulled some strings and uh, that's why I won it. Mm -hmm. So I just never validated that that was part of me. Even though I have a great range of vocabulary, I seem to have, one of my superpowers is pulling a word out of thin air that completely is fitting to whatever conversation I'm having, even though I may not have spoken or thought about that particular word like in years. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go on Google, look up the meaning, and it's exactly the word that I was supposed to say. So it's just very interesting, given my love of words and my love of language, which is one of the things that um, intrigued me about NLP, because we learn about a linguistics and how we talk and what patterns that evolves in our brain and, and all kinds of wonderful things. Mm -hmm. So. Writing has been a piece. Um, I've always been a singer. I played flute and tenor sax and stage band in high school. So there's different mediums of artistry that I have, but I never believed that I was good enough for any of them. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was supposed to be the good girl. I was supposed to get a good education and do something that would um, 
be a consistent support for myself and mm -hmm. just la 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 all these stories that we tell ourselves yeah. from and um, so so yeah I'm very grateful that um, my wife and I decided to take the plunge and just that's it we're we're following our hearts and souls and we're gonna study shamanism with our wonderful teacher and just answer the call and just be closer to nature that mm -hmm. has been the most amazing spiritual aspect for me this winter I've renewed my love of winter February not so much but <laughs> the amount of snow that we still have up there is insane um, and uh, and just yeah communing with nature spirit is in nature nature is just where we belong and mm -hmm. so the that's, beauty yeah yeah that's so wonderful I was so amazed when I heard that you were doing that it was just like but but you have that beautiful home in Barrie, just on the outskirts, you know? I, know. I mean, it, it was amazing when you made that move. It was a beautiful, beautiful home. And it's very funny because any, any of our friends that have seen the pictures of our new place, um, not many people have been up there yet because we took possession um, end of the fall, beginning of winter. So um, we're expecting an onslaught this summer of people coming up, including you. Yes, I know. I've been telling everybody <laughs> I'm going to Manitoulin to help build a labyrinth. <laughs> I cannot wait. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, um, but even though the house doesn't look physically that much similar, it's just, it's just, it's us. It's it's, it's the same the energy. It's just you know, yeah. we're on water, which is so healing, and it mm. faces the west. We've got sunsets every day, and you know, three acres of forest behind the house, and it's mm. just. I pinch myself every day. I'm just yeah. so blessed. That really is cool. Mm -hmm. And I just want to go back to what you were talking about with um, resistance, mm -hmm. because you just gave me an aha. Wonderful. Yeah, because I, I've been following a spiritual path for mm -hmm. a few years now, and I can see all the way through my life where I got you know snippets and I resisted. Yes. And I've always told myself, well, it just wasn't time. And I think you have to be very careful when you tell yourself that mm -hmm. because that can be the ego saying yeah it's not quite the right time to do that let's mm -hmm. just sit over here and play with the puppies you know absolutely and and i've just been sitting here thinking all the times recently that i've been going no it's okay that i'm you know just sort of I don't want to use the word coasting, but mm -hmm. I do feel like I'm in a very pleasant place. Mm -hmm. My life is terrific. I'm doing the things that I want to do. And I spend a lot of time just being in that place. Mm -hmm. And yet, the minute you said resistance, an alarm went off in my head and I thought, uh-oh, mm -hmm. I think egos had a little too much to do with me coasting as opposed to being. Yeah. And it's so easy to become complacent. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It um and 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 you can't uh, when we made the move, I gave myself January to just be. Like it was I wasn't intending on doing anything and I didn't. And then you do need to be careful because those long periods of not following anything, that's when resistance does kick in and it's like, oh, see how nice this is? Yeah. Because if you're not uncomfortable, you're not growing. So it depends on if, you know, that's your goal or not. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are definitely certain times in your life where it's, you know, you've been through trauma, you've gone through some hardships. Okay, I just need to breathe for a minute here. Mm -hmm. And that is absolutely okay yeah to absolutely have those necessary. Peers. absolutely yeah and the gauge that I use now for when I know resistance is being 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 there yeah <laughs> I was gonna use a bad word I'm like no it has to be nice being sneaky um, <laughs> sneaky that's a good one um, is how empty you feel after you do the thing that you did instead of doing the thing you were supposed to do so oh. if you sit, oh, okay, well, I, it's a Harry Potter day. I'm going to sit here and I'm going to watch all the Harry Potters back to back. And some days that is 100% necessary. And there are other days that that was just a complete distraction to keep you from doing what you're supposed to do. So if after that episode of watching those things or whatever it is for you, um, I have some games on my phone that I use when I'm numbing out and afterwards I feel wretched like so if you do that and then afterwards you're like I'm not rested I'm not relaxed I don't feel better I feel worse that's when you know that you have given in to resistance mm. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting because I had this sense of anxiety come up on the weekend, mm-hmm. and I thought, why would I be feeling this anxiety? I don't have any real stressors. I mean, yes, I'm one of those people who lets my gas tank run to empty, and then it's a stressor <laughs> to get to the gas station. But I mean, you know, that's, that's life things. Mm-hmm. So I couldn't figure it out. And as I'm listening to you, I'm hearing this voice inside of me saying, that's what I'm talking about, you know? So mm-hmm. thank you, because that has just given me the realization that I've been sitting back feeling, in fact, I've used the word arrogant a couple of times recently Hmm. about where I'm at because I'm feeling so peaceful and I'm not really doing anything out of the ordinary. I mean, I am. Mm -hmm. Anita Carr and I are starting, you know, Soul Satsang in Barrie. Yes, that sounds amazing. Yeah, I know. I'm so excited about that. But even that, I'm saying to myself, so, okay, yeah, you're doing yet another speaking thing Mm -hmm. so that's okay yes you're comfortable doing that exactly exactly and so now i'm thinking all right what i said on another show and i'm going to say it again i told some friends that i was going to write Mm -hmm. the book that i Mm -hmm. think everybody has inside of them Mm -hmm. and i've been writing a few notes and looking through stuff that i've written throughout my life to see what can be pulled together from that. But basically, I haven't been sitting down and committing to writing a few mm-hmm. pages every day yeah. or, you know, and I keep thinking to myself, oh, it'll, you know, it'll come. The words come and I write them down and then eventually I'll pull it together. That's not really writing a book. Mm-hmm. That's just sort of playing at it, yeah. I think. Yeah, and he talks about that too. He talks about being an amateur or going pro. Mm. And another big barometer for um, resistance is is fear. So the more fear you feel about doing something, the more likely it is that that's exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Well, it's funny because I was doing some writing on the weekend, mm-hmm. and I think now that I'm you know sort of listening to myself and listening to you and just kind of gauging my feelings, I think that's exactly what's going on. Mm-hmm. And I've done it twice. Pardon me on these shows talking about the book that I'm going to write and there it is again my stomach just went mm-hmm. and I guess that's you're right holy whistling <laughs> wow this feels like a therapy session <laughs> look at you helping me release my stuff <laughs> that's what I try to do yeah mm-hmm. so tell me how do you do that um as I said the, it's it's a process I'm, I'm working through right now um part of my resistance is not has been in not believing that I was capable in doing the things that I have been training to do mm-hmm. and um, so I've been pushing past my barriers I think you spoke to Dion actually about our hundred women on fire event that yeah. she's put together which is incredible the amount of work she's been doing to it and I'm gonna be one of the speakers mm-hmm. and I'm actually going to be speaking about resistance oh, a little bit cool. more in-depthly uh-huh. so um, you know, as when I was growing up, one of my one of the major ways that I shared my voice was through acting, and um, I'm at home on the stage. It's just it's home for me. Mm-hmm. And um, but I was always more comfortable using someone else's words, speaking somebody else's truth. Mm-hmm. And now I'm at a place where it's like, okay, nope, that's that's where you're comfortable, Leanne. Time to spread out and actually start you know, sharing some of these things that have been so impactful for my evolution and my change in the last few years. And so getting up on stage and speaking for 45 minutes, there's my belly going. (laughs) Like, it's just, uh, yeah. So I've been having some huge issues with that. And there's been a couple of times that I've said to Dion, like, I want to bail. I don't want to do this. And and I 100% know that that's my resistance. That's my Sheeta. That's Mm -hmm. my ego. That's that's telling me not to. So, um... So yeah, it's it's new for me to be telling it to sit down. It's not your turn to drive the bus right now. I'm in control right now, and uh, and I'm going to do this to help to evolve. Mm-hmm. And um, so, uh, Dion and I also run a um, women's circle once a month, mm-hmm. which you have been to and you're going to speak at as well, which is very exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's something that we do once a month, 
and um, yes, I'm going to be getting myself out there as a practitioner and actually start walking my talk. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. that is so cool. That mm -hmm. is really cool. And I know that each of us has come to realize our own gifts that help us mm -hmm. to do that and to, uh, I wanted to say, lead the way. Um, and my sense of leading the way is when we uh, we live our best lives mm -hmm. and and do the things that bring us joy and help other women find that same place in them and, and not just women yeah. I, I'm I have to admit I'm more comfortable working with women right. and that's just you know mm -hmm. who I am and I also think the women I'm sorry I'm gonna say it women have been repressed for hundreds of years and I think we're finally cracking that egg and breaking mm -hmm. through that shell and finding who we are not to say we're better than anybody else but to fully realize everything mm -hmm. that we're capable of and being right. proud of that and showing that and I think that there's still a tremendous amount of women out there who resist that by saying mm -hmm. all that woo-woo stuff or you know no I don't need mm -hmm. to do that I found myself but I don't know that they have you know so I really congratulate you on seeking yourself and finding yourself leaving what was you know uh, according to society's mm -hmm. lights a, a very good job and mm -hmm. and so forth and striking out on the journey of who am I and what do I bring to the world and what do I have to share mm -hmm. and how can I be of service absolutely that is the number one thing to ask yeah yeah so I really appreciate that uh, that you have done that for yourself because in doing it for yourself you allow other women to do that as well to find themselves and I think that's what you know I've said it before I was raised in a, in a strict Baptist home mm -hmm. and it was all about witnessing to people about you know the religion the core yeah. and for me the witnessing lies in doing exactly that mm -hmm. following your journey finding out who you are being who you are and then showing others that they too can do the same thing so that's really terrific so let me just say that it has been a real pleasure to have you here today and I can't wait to get to Manitoulin mm -hmm. and see your home and see what's happening up there and be a part of you know building even more of uh, of that physical journey the ripple effect the ripple effect mm -hmm. yeah it's wonderful and I thank you for dropping in to epiphanies I hope you've enjoyed yourself and I hope to see you again here on epiphanies thanks Leanne I thank you it. so much yeah, that's